Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Get your King James Bible. Turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. We're going to look at the woman. There's basically two women in the scriptures, the bride of Christ and the whore or the harlot that rides the beast in the book of Revelation. Uh, so we're going to take a look at Eve and how that relates. You know, the Bible, when you think about it, the Bible is the book of Adam. And the word Adam, if you can find an old Strong's Concordance written in the 80s or back further, is a racial description. So, what can I tell you? All right. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, Let us. What? But, 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 Chaplain Bob, the Bible says there's only one God. So who's he talking to there? Let us. Uh, does God have a mouse in his pocket? A couple of mice in his pocket? Or what? What's the deal? Well, God made man in his image. And the, body, uh, the Bible records that man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Three parts make one person, a man, or a woman. So, body, soul, and spirit. So, and God said, let us make man in our image. So, if man has a body, soul, and spirit, and we're made in God's image, of course, God's a spirit, we are flesh, and that word image in the Greek, believe it or not, well, obviously the New Testament is in Greek, but the Old Testament is in Hebrew. But when you're looking at the word image in the New Testament, it's where you get the word icon. Uh, has reference to pictures, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you think about it. We're made in the image of God. That is, woof. that's something. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Do you know what dominion means? It means domination. God wanted man, Adam, to have domination over the earth just as like God as dominates the heavens God wanted us to have domination over the earth so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them Male and female, but Adam and Eve aren't even, uh, Adam hasn't been formed yet, and Eve didn't come till after that. So what's the deal here? Well, there's two general schools of thought here. One school of thought is, is that God made a creation, and then somehow things went south, they went bad, and the world was destroyed, either in a war or God destroyed it or the war in heaven or whatever. Somehow the world got messed up and everything was destroyed and the Lord had to start all over again. That's one theory. Uh, we'll take a look at that. 
Now, in Jeremiah chapter 4, uh, if you want, you could read the whole chapter, but I'm just going to, you know, take a look at it. Uh, verse 22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Verse 23. Here's the punchline. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. Okay. Now, some people will uh, tie that in with uh, Genesis 1. In verse 2, uh, Genesis chapter 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Now, some people think that there was a world before Adam. I, I just don't think there's enough to go there some people believe it yeah you know i mean some people believe in fairies and elves and you know whatever unicorns with uh horses with wings with horns coming out of their forehead i don't know all right one of the things that uh people believe that is because of genesis 128 and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moved upon the earth. Replenish, that's the uh, key word. And then in Genesis 9-1, after the flood, it, you know, God and God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish, replenish the earth so you know some people believe that there was a world before uh the earth and it got destroyed and i don't know i just don't think there's that much to go with however uh let's see here we go all right, so in Genesis 1, 27, it says, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, personally, I think this is talking about the souls. I, um, I believe that this is where the Lord created the souls of every person uh, that will ever exist on the face of the earth and then uh, later on we're going to cover this we're going to go to it but then later adam formed was formed out of the dust of the earth and he breathed into him the breath of life uh that word breathe is from the um i think it's ruach but uh, he breathed the spirit into him and man became a living soul so, man technically in the flesh didn't exist until he had a body, obviously, right? So, all right, let's go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. Uh, the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, of whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the king of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. Now, Josiah was a good king, just so you know. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. Uh, that's talking about the Babylonian captivity. Verse 4. 
Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now listen carefully. Before I formed thee in the belly, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So God told Jeremiah before he was even in his mother's womb, he knew him. How would he have known him before he was even born? Well, of course, the Lord knows the beginning from the end and everything in between. But is it possible that we existed in some sort of spiritual realm before we were born in the flesh? I think so. Because God said that he hated Esau. And he hated Esau before he was even born. So, I don't know. That's just my little theory there. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Do you know that word nations there is the same word as they sometimes translate as Gentiles? Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder why the King James Bible peop, uh, translators did that. You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I, I'm of the opinion that the Lord wanted us to, to dig. He wanted to hide from the people unless they really were serious and dug. Because it wouldn't have made any sense to say, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the Gentiles. I mean, that wouldn't have, to most people, that wouldn't make sense. You know, because the modern church world says, oh, well, Gentile, that just means non-Jew. Actually, it doesn't mean that. No, it just means nations. You could be of the nations of Israel or Judah. Same word. So, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, and to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Ah, See, Jeremiah witnessed the destruction of Jerusalem. So, all right, so back to Genesis 1, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Like I say, I think these are the souls of people. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. All right. And, um, yeah, and then in verse 31, like I mentioned in the previous lesson, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Okay. Uh, which is why I don't think that the um, God destroyed everything in the past. I, I don't know. Some people believe it. That's all right. It's not a 
salvational issue. Sort of like the flat earth. It's not a salvation issue. You know, Jesus didn't say, believe on me in the flat earth. No. Although some people think he did, but he didn't. Chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Now, when you says when it says here the host, uh, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Honestly, I think he's talk when he when he mentions the host of heaven, um, a lot of times it's referring to the angels. All right, so and on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Now, why did God rest? Was he tired? Hey, creating a whole universe, right? you think he'd be tired. No, no. It's like the Bible says, the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. Take one day a week to rest and recuperate the physical body and to feed nourishment to the spiritual body. A day to reflect upon the Lord. One day of the week to reflect upon the Lord. And God didn't rest because he was tired. He did it as an example. You know, look at Christ. All the things that Christ did. Christ prayed. Uh, you know, he, he fasted. He, he All the things he did, he did as an example for us. Think about that. All right. Uh, let's keep reading here. Uh, verse 3, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Well, it's kind of hard to till the ground if you don't have a physical body, right? But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Huh. Now, when you... Um, all right, so God formed man of the dust of the ground, a body, right? Breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So, got a body, a soul, and when you read breathe and breath, um, matter of fact, in the, in the Greek, the uh, word for spirit and wind is the word pneuma. Uh, guys, have you ever heard of pneumatic tools, air tools, pneumatic tools? That's where it comes from. But the word spirit or ghost, that's where, that's where it comes from. So here it is. Man has a body, a soul, and God breathed into him his spirit. There you go. Body, soul, and spirit. So, I believe that uh, when God allows us to have a body formed, he puts your 
soul and spirit into it and then we have our physical existence but it would seem that we don't have a recollection of life before we were born in the flesh that is all right let's go to romans chapter 9 verse 1 i say the truth in christ i lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the holy ghost that i have hate a uh, great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Whose are the fathers and of whom are as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. All right, verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now remember, I, Abraham had two children. He had Ishmael, which the Muslims claim that many of them are of Ishmael. And then there was Isaac. And Isaac was the chosen seed, not Ishmael. Um, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Listen to this carefully. Verse 11. For the children being not yet born. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Wow. See, this is why a lot of people don't like Paul. Paul tells it like it is. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election. Well, what's an election? That's when, so, well, in theory. In theory, an election is when you uh, the people vote and make a choice. Uh, I, I don't believe elections are valid anymore. But... Um, but whose who's, who's, who's election is this? It's God's. You can't commit voter fraud with that. That the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Guess what? Esau was the elder. Jacob was the younger. And the children had not even been born yet, and they hadn't done anything good or evil. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. 
It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. And that's in Malachi chapter 1. I believe that Esau and Jacob existed in some sort of spiritual form before they were even born. And God knew what a piece of garbage Esau was. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, For even the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. Oh, yeah. So, I that's what I believe. All right, let's go to Genesis 2 again. All right, Genesis 2 and verse 15. Let's skip on down. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, All right, so here it is. The Lord's telling Adam, here we go, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Uh, somehow I kind of wonder if the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is Satan himself. I don't know. I'm kind of of that opinion. And Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, for I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Uh, anesthesia, anybody? You know, think about it. Uh, they only, anesthesia, the idea of anesthesia uh, has only been, what, maybe 200 years? Um, well, in the West. I don't know. I, I heard they had, you know, were using opium and stuff Uh in Asia for uh, things, but they, you know, we didn't have high technology back then, you know. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woe man, a woe man. A woe, man. Yeah, look at that. Woe. She's a woe man, right? And brought her unto the man. And, uh, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 
Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Yeah, we don't want no mama's boys. No, you got to be stand up on your own two feet and be a man. We don't want you hanging out on uh, mama's uh, apron strings, right? And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So, now, an interesting point here. It was the Lord that told Adam to stay away from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I can't, if, if the Lord spoke directly to the woman to stay away from the knowledge, tree of knowledge of good and evil, I don't know where it is. But uh, I suspect perhaps Adam told her what the Lord had said. I, you know, there's some things in the Bible that are just not there. Like, who was Noah's wife? Who was Shem's wife? Who was Ham's wife? Who was Canaan's wife? You know, there's just some things that are just not in there to, to make a judgment call. Now, in, verse, in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation, it tells you the old serpent is called the devil and Satan. Okay? We covered that in the last study. Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Huh. Do you know that they're in Florida? Now, I've lived here my most of my life. Probably, I probably lived in Florida for at least, at least uh, 50 years of my life. You know, we got a tree here called the death apple. Yeah, the death apple. This tree is so toxic, if you stand underneath it when it's raining, your skin will burn. Uh, its stuff is nasty. It's got a fruit that tastes like an apple, from what I've read. And it isn't until after you eat it that your stomach just basically disintegrates or whatever and you die. I don't know what happens. I don't know if it's poison or uh, caustic or whatever, but it's it's nasty. Like it's the death apple. Uh, the Spaniards were the first ones to uh, find it. They said, oh, hey, look at this fruit. Okay. So they picked the apple, they ate it, and then they died. Yeah. Oh, okay. The name of this is uh, Manchineel. M-A-N, man, C-H-I-N-E-E-L. Um, the Spanish name is Manzanilla de la Muerte which means little apple of death. It's one of the most toxic trees in the world. Bad news. Now I'm not saying this is what the tree of good and evil was. I'm just I'm just bringing this up to try to impress all you with my knowledge of stuff, I guess. No, I'm joking. Uh when I get everything figured out, I'll let you know, but until then, so no, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion that, uh, you know, Jesus, I think Jesus is the tree of life. So why couldn't Satan be the tree of knowledge of good and evil? I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe there is actually was a tree. I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know. But. I don't know. Just a guess. Uh, I got a lot of questions. If I make it into the kingdom, I got a lot of questions to ask. So, verse 3. But of the 
uh, Genesis 3, 3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Remember, Satan is, in John 8, 44, he's called the father of lies. First recorded lie in the Bible. God, uh, Satan questions God's words, and then he lies. Oh, you're not going to die. Don't listen to God. He's holding you back. He's keeping you down. He's the man. He's the man that's keeping you down. Yeah, he's keeping you down. Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. I wonder if the Masonic Lodge got their idea for aprons from this. So, Eve... She, uh, yeah, well, let's read a couple things. All right, here's that uh, sexist uh, Paul preaching. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp, usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now, I, I think this is referring to uh, woman pastors. Um, I'll tell you what, my opinion here, there's a few women that I've learned a lot from, like Gail Ripplinger. I, I trust her. Uh, matter of fact, I'll take a godly woman teaching the truth over uh, an ungodly lying heretic. Uh, there's one who has the name White, who has uh, white in his name. Uh, I'll, I'll take a woman over a, a heretic man any day. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. Oh no, Adam knew what he was doing. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So, Lord wants you to have faith, charity, another word for charity, uh, a synonym for charity is love. Uh, if you look it up in the Greek, they translate that word charity sometimes as love, sometimes as charity. Because let's face it, if you have love, you'll have charity. And if, and if you have charity, you got love in your heart. So either way, you know, it's synonymous. So faith, charity, holiness, and sobriety. God doesn't want a bunch of drunkards. All right, let's skip down to verse 20. Because I already did a lot of this. All right, and Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now, some people, you know, they'll, I don't know, They think all means all. Does all mean all? Always? No, it doesn't. Was Eve the mother of all living? Uh, was she the mother of birds? No. What about snakes? No. Was she the mother of goldfish? No. No. 
She was the mother of all living that came from her. How come the Bible doesn't say, and Adam was the father of all living? How come it doesn't say that? That's a question you ought to think about. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now, if you want to think that all means all, Romans 3.23. For all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, does that mean Jesus sinned? Does all mean all? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? Did Jesus sin? I mean, after all, all means all, right? All right. Well, let's let's take the uh, let's take the nail and nail this uh, all to the cross. Hebrews four fourteen. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. What was the subject? Jesus, the Son of God, the great high priest. He was without sin. So, does all mean all? No. So, Jesus didn't sin. So, Eve was the mother of all living of Adam kind. Okay? If that makes sense. Through Eve and Adam, you had the chosen seed line from... Um, Going down through Eber, through Noah, Shem, and then uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, so this is the end of part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.